Welcome back to another show of Golf Tips. I'm your host and teaching professional, Gary Bauer. On today's show, we'll visit Indian Springs Golf Club, a fantastic course located in Mechanicsburg, Ohio. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Well, I've arrived here at Indian Springs Golf Club, and again, it's a fantastic course to play located in Mechanicsburg, Ohio. And to tell us a little bit about the course is Dan Long, the manager. Hi, Dan. Hey, Gary. Tell us a little bit about your golf course. Well, Indian Springs was open in 1990. It was designed by Jack Kidwell and Michael Hurston. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's laid out on over 300 acres of naturally rolling land with natural creeks, ponds, woods. Uh, it's over 7,100 yards from the back tees, but we have four sets of tees, so it's very manageable for players of any skill level, down to 5,400 yards. It's bent grass fairways, tees, and greens. Right. So it's a wonderful course to play, even if you're not a golfer. So it's a challenging land. course, but yet a very fair course. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Right. Tell us a little bit about the uh, leagues or outings that you have here. Uh, well, we can host leagues and outings of any size. Uh, in fact, with leagues, we'll actually run all the handicapping, scorecards, points, everything for you if you like. Uh, we enjoy doing outings in leagues, and we, we enjoy seeing just open play also. So it's got you have leagues, you have outings. I know you have a restaurant here. It's a pretty well maintained course, and it's anything a, a person would want to have or play when they come out. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. And uh, for the quality of course and design and everything like that, the prices are amazing. In fact, we have three other fantastic golf courses in Ohio also. And if you go to www.golfindiansprings.com, you can check out all four. Oh, that's great. Okay, fantastic. Well, now I'm going to go over to the range, and we're going to cover some instruction with one of my students. Right. Thanks again, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate uh -huh. it. The driving range is a fantastic place to practice your fundamentals. And once you get your fundamentals down, carry them out to the golf course, and hopefully you'll shoot lower scores. Now today I have a new student, Rob, who's going to start with a 7-iron, I believe. Hi, Rob. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me out. Hey, no problem. Now go ahead. What I do with my students, first thing I do is take some practice swings. I want to see where their grip is, their stance, their ball position, and I check and look for their balance. So I want you to take a few practice swings. Okay, and when you've been hitting your 7-iron or your upper irons, have you been pushing it to the right, pulling it to the left, topping the ball? I pull a little bit to the left. Pull a little bit to the left, okay? Take some more practice swings here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm checking out his grip to see if he has a strong grip or a weak grip. Uh, he does have his Vs. His grip looks pretty good. I might take that right hand and move it a little bit up underneath. Um, so let's take that right hand and just move it this way a little bit, Rob. The other way. Yeah, just a little bit there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now for balance, his feet should be shoulder width. So we are going to widen his uh, feet just a little bit for better balance. Take some more practice swings. And you say you've been pulling it to the left. Yes. Okay. Take a couple more practice swings here. All right, one more. So grip looks pretty good. Feet are shoulder width. I can see his hands are under his chin. That gives him the proper distance from the golf ball. Hands under the chin, club head and back the ball. So that looks good. All right, now hit a few shots for me. Let's see what we got. Now, do you play your uh, seven iron, your irons off the middle of the stance or forward? From the middle. From the middle, that's my very good. My irons, like the four, and, the four and five iron, I play in the front of my, front of my stance. You play a little bit forward, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's got a seven iron, so let's play the ball a little bit forward in his stance here. Okay. Yeah, so we got it. It was a little bit back in your stance, so we're going to move it off the center a little bit. Okay, that looks better. A little bit more towards the middle there, Rob. Okay. Now, those two shots, he came up and out of it. So um, he hit them sort of thin, sort of low. So first thing I would say, hey, let's get those shoulders staying a little bit more level, turning into the shot versus pulling the left side up. So I want you to take a couple practice swings and try to get your hands to come around by your left shoulder, left ear. Okay, we're going to flatten your swing out a little bit here. Okay. And the ball position is off the middle of the stance. So four through nine iron, we want to play more towards the middle. 
Okay. So I've got to get him to turn into the shot a little bit better, keeping those shoulders level. If we pull the left shoulder up and come up and out of the shot, we're going to hit it low and sometimes to the right. All right, let's try another shot here, Rob. So he's got a seven iron, ball position middle, feet are shoulder width. Okay, a little bit to the right there again. Okay. So we're not finishing through the shot. We want to feel our hands come around by our left shoulder, left ear. Okay. Okay, that was much better. Good height and good distance. So he turned into that shot. There was no sway. You didn't pull up with that left side. Let's see another one here. So what I've seen with Rob so far, I would make sure that his right hand is over a little bit. We don't want a weak grip, but yet we don't want a strong grip. So we want to turn that right hand underneath a little bit there, Rob, okay. Yep, about right through here, okay. We narrowed his stance for better balance, and I want him to turn into the shot. I want those hands to come around by his right, or his left shoulder, left ear. Okay, we want to finish around and through the shot. Okay, now we hit it fat. Now a lot of people do that when they're on the driving range or even when they're out playing. And what happened when he went down to hit that ball, he actually dropped his right shoulder way too soon. The right knee might have collapsed a little bit. He's going to drop the club. He's going to hit behind the ball. So we have to keep those shoulders more level and sweep through the ball. We will take a divot, but the divot is always out ahead of the golf ball. So we want to keep the shoulders a little bit more level and we want to turn through it. Now take some more practice swings there, Rob. So again, we narrowed his stance, so feet are shoulder width now. Ball position, middle of the stance, he has a seven iron, the four through the nine iron off the middle. And I've got to get him to turn through that shot. We want that weight transfer and his right knee will turn it by his left knee as he transfers his weight to his left side, okay? So go ahead, bring that club back, okay, good. Now when you come down, drop your arms. Now we start to turn. The club will come around by his left shoulder, left ear. He will turn in the shot. We don't want to rock the shoulders up and down during the golf swing. We'll hit it fat or heavy or hit it thin, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's try another seven iron here. So ball position middle. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Good shot. And he turned into it. Right knee up by left knee, hands faced around. Let's see another one. So we don't want that right hand to go over the top of the club, get a weak grip, narrow the stance for better balance, and flatten the swing out by making the hands come around by his left shoulder, left ear. That is absolutely perfect. Straight, high, and long. Very good, and that's your seven iron, okay? Now, once you go ahead, let's get a five iron here out of your bag. So now we got a five iron. Ball position will still be towards the middle or center of the stance. His hands will be underneath his chin, below his chin, club head and back the ball to give him the proper distance from the golf ball. Again, your feet are shoulder width for better balance. If you have a wide stance, you can't use your legs and hips like you should. You can't turn into the shot. You can't get your right knee up by your left knee. You must stay level and turn. And we want to get his hands, again, to finish around by his left shoulder, left ear, to sweep through the shot, okay? So you got your five. Again, play the ball off the middle. Middle of stance and a good turn. And we got that right hand. Don't let that right hand creep over the top now. Okay, now straight but a little heavy. So on the downswing, his right shoulder drops some. So we got to turn. Shoulders stay a little bit more level through the shot. All right, let's try another one. Okay, still a little heavy. And again, a lot of people do that. You don't have to go down after the ball. You don't want to drop, you want to turn through it. For a good weight transfer, shoulders more level, hands come around. Now take a couple practice swings again, and we want to bring those hands around by your left shoulder, left ear, 
So you're going to sweep through the shot, not drop that right shoulder down to hit it fat or heavy. So again, got the five iron ball position, middle of the stance. His feet will be shoulder width for balance. We don't want that wide stance. And if you're too narrow on your stance, you'll lose your balance. You'll sway back and forth, okay? See a good shot here. It's so a ball position middle, feet shoulder width. Setup looks pretty good. Okay, still a little heavy. Okay, again, so as we're coming down to the ball, or your club here, so as he's coming down to the ball, he's dropping his right shoulder. He's coming back and then going down. Well, we don't have to go down after that ball. Just sweep through it. And you just brush that grass, you pick it right off. Some people have a little bit of a steeper swing. They might take a little bit of a divot with a five iron out in front of the ball, but you want to sweep through it and then get that turn. Hands come around by the left shoulder, left ear. Okay, let's try another one. So we've changed his grip a little bit. We narrowed his stance, and we want a little bit more of a flatter swing, not an upright swing where you come down, chop down, take a divot, so forth and so on. Great shot. Good ball. There you go. Now see, he didn't take a divot that time. He swept through the, through the ball. That was very, very good. Let's see another one. Okay, just a little heavy. Now the direction was perfect, but the distance was not there. So we gotta stay a little bit more level, not take a divot, not hit behind the ball. Okay, let's try another one. Shoulders level and a good turn. That was better, that was better. Still a little bit behind it, right shoulder coming down but straight. All right, so we want to sweep through it. Let's try another one here. So we changed that grip a little bit. Don't forget to keep that right hand over this way, not over the top for that weak grip. So he's got his V's. That's what we want to have when you set up for a proper grip. Oh, that was perfect. That was the best one. That was very, very good. That was excellent. And that's what we want to do. We want to be able to get through that ball. We want to sweep through that ball, transfer the weight to the left side. The right knee will turn up by the left knee, and the hands finish around by his left shoulder, left ear. We'll be right back with more golf tips. Welcome back. I hope everyone enjoyed that last segment with the irons. And now I'm going to have Rob start with a three wood. Rob, go ahead and grab your three wood and some golf tees. And I tell my students, with your woods, you want to play the ball forward in your stance. If you're a right-handed golfer, it will be off your inside left heel. If you're a left-handed golfer, it will be off the inside right heel. So we play the ball forward in our stance. How high do we tee the ball up? You want to at least have half the ball above the top edge of the club head half into the club face, okay? And again, his feet should be shoulder width for balance. And we covered the grip. He got his right hand over this way a little bit, up underneath the club, so he doesn't have a weak grip. And his hands finished around by his left shoulder, left ear, okay? That is absolutely perfect. Now see, he swept through it. He kept his shoulders level. He got up under the ball. Hit it dead straight, that was about 260, 265. Okay, let's see another one. So feet are shoulder width for balance. Hands are under his chin, ball position left heel, and a good turn. Oh, that's perfect, Rob. Shoulder stayed level, excellent. Straight and long. How far do you normally hit your three wood? 240, 250. Well, that's, you've got some good distance now. You're really getting through the ball. He's bringing his hands around by his left shoulder, left ear. That looks pretty good. Good weight transfer. 
and his right knee is turning it by his left knee. Wow. Okay, just a little bit of a push, not bad. And when we push the ball or hit it out to the right, a lot of times my students are sliding, they're swaying. And what that does, that opens the club face. When you lean out, throws that left side out, it slightly opens the club face, you're gonna block it or push it to the right. So we don't wanna lean, again, we wanna turn. Hands face around by the left shoulder, left ear, okay? So ball position, left heel, he's got the proper tee height. Setup looks pretty good. Great shot. Very nice shot. Very good. Hands finished around. Okay, let's see another one. And we got that grip corrected now. That right hand has just moved over this way a little bit up underneath the club. And that will give him his V's, the point between his thumb and forefinger, which should come up towards his right shoulder. Okay. Wow, absolutely perfect, solid, and long. Very, very nice, great. Okay, now I want you to get your driver. Let's see what we can do with the one wood. Now with the driver, you wanna tee it up, half the ball above the top edge of the club head, half into the club face. And Rob, let me borrow your driver real quick, and your tee, okay. Now, by doing so, when I talk about that, here's the top edge of the club head. The center of the golf ball, should be pretty much even with the top edge, half into the club face and half above the edge of the golf club. So you wanna tee it up similar to that. You don't wanna tee it up real low, you'll hit it thin most of the time. If you tee it up too high, you're gonna pop it up. So half the ball above the top edge of the club head, half into the club face is the proper tee height with your woods, okay? Thank you. And he'll play the ball off his left heel. He's a right-handed golfer. Feet are shoulder width. We narrowed his stance just a little bit for better balance. So feet are shoulder width. Hands are under his chin. And a good turn. Okay, not bad. A little bit on the heel. So we lost the balance a little bit. Might have been leaning forward on the downswing. That pushes a club out. You hit it on the heel. So that's balance there. T height looks pretty good. Now hands finish around by your left shoulder, left ear. Wow, that's solid. Nice ball, straight and long. That's probably about 290, 295. That's very good, very good. So we changed the grip a little bit, narrowed his stance, and the hands finished around by the left shoulder, left ear to flatten his swing out. Okay, a little bit up under that one, so the right shoulder might have dropped a little bit, causes him to pop it up. So our shoulders were rocking, his shoulders were rocking versus staying level. Okay. So it's just arms and turn. We don't want to sway back and forth. Hands finished around by his left shoulder, left ear. Oh, that's perfect. That's solid. Real good shot. Very nice shot. Let's see another one. Now, do you feel like you're getting more distance now? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting it out there pretty good. I mean, to hit 290, 295, that's, that's great. It's a good swing. Hands finish around. Oh, another one's solid. Very, very, very nice. Straight and long. Very good, very good. So there you have it. Now he just hit his three wood as driver and that's the proper technique. Feet or shoulder width for balance. Ball position, left heel being a right-handed golfer, just the opposite if you're a left-handed golfer. We corrected his grip and the hands come around by his left shoulder, left to ear. We flattened the swing out to get him through the shop for a better weight transfer. We'll be right back with more golf tips.
On this, the last segment of the show, we're going to play the ninth hole here at Indian Springs Golf Club. It's a 545 yard par five, a very challenging hole. But before I do so, I wanna answer two of my callers that called in during the last show. And that was Savannah and Dylan. Uh, they both had questions. And Savannah, I believe you ask, how high do you tee the ball? Well, I've already covered it on this show, but I'm gonna cover it again. So I've got my driver. You want half the ball above the top edge of the club head, half into the club face. You don't want to tee it up extremely low because you might top it or hit it low. If you tee it up too high, you might pop it up. So when teeing it up with your woods, half the ball above this top edge, half into the club face. Now Dylan, I believe you asked why you always slice the ball. And if I remember right, you said your mom and dad, I think it was Denny and Melissa, they're pretty much scratch golfers. You said they shoot in the low 70s for 18 holes, which is good. So have them watch you, but there's two things that you could be doing wrong. The first is throw a ball down here. You might be swaying back and forth. So if you sway back and sway forward, that will open the club face and you will hit it to the right, okay? So you wanna stay still, not sway back and forth, but you wanna stay still and turn, okay? Another reason you could have a weak grip, if your right hand's way over the top, that's gonna promote a, a slice or a big fade. So have your mom and dad check your grip too. But basically, Dylan, you just wanna come back with your arms, down with your arms, and your hands finish around by your left shoulder, left ear. Okay, and I hope that helped you. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tee it up. And remember, Savannah, I'm gonna have half the ball above the top edge of this club head, half into the club face. My feet will be shoulder width for balance, and I'm a right-handed golfer, so the ball is played off my inside left heel. I'm gonna to try to pick a spot out in front of my ball that gives me the angle towards the fairway. Got my spot. Take a few practice swings, get loosened up. My hands come around by my left shoulder, left ear. So it's arms and turn. So let's see what we can do here. Got the driver, got the tee height. That looks pretty good. Arms and turn. That's perfect. That's right down the middle. That's a good shot. Okay. All right, let's see what we can do with that next shot. Okay, that wasn't a bad shot. That drive went about 280, 285 at the most. Uh, now, course management. It's a long hole. I'm not gonna make it on that green with a three wood from here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and use a six iron. I wanna play it up short and um, hopefully give me a little pitching wedge onto the green and hopefully one putt it for a birdie. I did find the fairway, which is fantastic, but now I pick my spot out in front of the ball, a leaf twig, an old divot to line my club face and ball up with. And since this hole goes back to the left, I'm gonna aim a little bit out to the right, actually to the right of the 150 marker. Um, that's gonna be my target line. So I've got a six iron, the four through the nine iron, remember ball position off the middle or center of the stance. Your feet are shoulder width for balance. My hands should be below my chin. So I've got my target line and we wanna hit it up past that 150 marker pretty good. Let's see what we got here. Not bad. Okay, that wasn't a bad shot either. Now I've got about 90 yards to the flag stick. Got a little bit of wind in my face, so I'm gonna go ahead and ease up on a pitching wedge. And with the pitching wedge, you wanna play that ball slightly back in your stance towards the inside right knee. If you're a left-handed golfer, it's just the opposite. My feet should be shoulder width, and I wanna finish around and through the shot. So, set up here, play the ball a little bit back in my stance, hands will be under my chin. And let's just get it on the green. If it gets close to the hole, that's great. Hey, not a bad shot also. I have about a 10 and a half foot putt to the hole. So the first thing I wanna do is mark my ball. I put the coin in back of the ball. And as you can see, I did uh, make a divot. So you take a divot tool or the golf tee to repair it. you force the tee around the hole 
pushing it back the way the ball came in and you take your putter and you smooth it out back towards the fairway where you hit the shot. Now let's take the flag stick out. Now again with putting it doesn't matter how you stand or how you grip the club. Just have your head, your eyesight over the ball and bring the putter straight back and straight through it. Now again, use the line on the golf ball to get your alignment. Now I think this ball might break a little bit from right to left, maybe an inch, so I'm going to take the line on the golf ball and aim it about one inch to the right of the hole and then line it up with the white line on my putter. My wrist will stay stiff and firm and I bring the putter straight back and straight through it. Now I like to putt with my glove off. And that's my preference. So take a few practice swings. Hey, if we get a birdie here, one putt it, that's great. If we two putt it for the par, that's good. Okay, so I set up, my wrist stays stiff and firm, and gonna bring the putter straight back, straight through it. Almost, okay, let's go out and tap it in. And there we go. Well, that concludes today's show. I hope everyone enjoyed watching. And watch us next time on Golf Tips with teaching professional Gary Bauer.